Abdullah Mohammadi was 16 when he fled Afghanistan. That was seven years ago. In spring, he completed his apprenticeship here in Germany. I'm an installation mechanic for sanitary, heating and air conditioning systems. Germans are a minority in the company he works for. Ten of the 17 employees have an immigrant background. The boss doesn't mind where they come from, so long as they do a good job. But some customers can be difficult. For example, some nationalities aren't permitted to work in certain state-owned buildings. That ban affects quite a few of his employees. I've made a note of which nationalities. Afghan, Algerian, Armenian, Azerbaijani, Bosnian, Chinese. I've got people from Kosovo, from Bosnia-Herzegovina, one from Algeria, one from Afghanistan. And they have restricted access? Yeah, they're not allowed to work in government buildings. Basically, if the company gets the contract to replace a thermostat in a state-owned building authority, for example, Abdullah won't be allowed to do the job. The company's owner says that amounts to discrimination. They can't rule out that a German could be a danger. You can't just lump everyone together. It should be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. People could be asked to produce a police clearance certificate if security has to be so tight. But just barring perfectly innocent people because of where they're born is unfair. Regulations like these aren't the only obstacle to refugees finding employment. Politicians are also failing to deliver on their promises, according to Olaf Zimmermann. Everything has changed. In the beginning, everyone made a fuss of us, calling us a model business, an example of successful integration. But as soon as they're integrated, they're excluded again. I don't understand it. Germany needs skilled workers. Companies are always complaining they can't fill positions, especially in jobs involving physical labor. And yet here in southern Germany, rules and regulations seem to be becoming ever more stringent. This garden center has vacancies. The federal government told companies that any refugees they trained would be allowed to stay in Germany for at least two years after qualifying. But Bavaria's state government isn't sticking to that. The Bavarian Interior Ministry has reformulated this rule, so now it only applies to five nationalities. And my two trainees have the wrong nationality. Maher Azar came to Germany from Pakistan. He doesn't speak much German, but he's keen to work. He sends money he earns back to the family he left behind. I have family in Pakistan, two daughters. He needs to make a living, and the company needs his labor. It should be straightforward, but it's not. In December, he was told he'd be deported. It's not clear if he'll be able to finish his training or not. His boss is already looking for a replacement for him. It's difficult for us. You get to know them. They're not just anonymous asylum applicants. They're colleagues. So it's tough when you hear they're going to be deported. Maher Azar has filed an appeal. Now it's up to the courts to decide his fate. He's allowed to stay in Germany and continue working until a decision is reached.